Good day, Namaskar, Assalamu Alaikum, Adab. Welcome to Hani Walia Show. Uh, as you know, we always talk about different topics, different uh, issues which Alberta or Canada is facing or going through. Today we have Minister of uh, Advanced Education, Mr. Nicola Dice, with, with us. He was elected as a Legislative Assembly of Alberta on April 16, 2019. He's MLA for Calgary Bow. Uh, and his past little bit experience is he has an extensive training in arbitration. He has a PhD in, uh, um, as a doctor. So I don't know, should I call him Honorable Minister or a doctor? Um, he has uh, lived or does the hearing in Alberta, BC and Manitoba prior to his being elected as a minister. Welcome to show, sir. Thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here with you. So, sir, like, you know, you are a minister of advanced education and in my, like in my family, all have been teachers, my mother, my grandfather, my auntie and wife, you know, everyone in a teacher. And what I have been told and taught, like, you know, education is not only important for us, it also builds a future of society, culture, province and world, you know, country and the world. So in building the future of Alberta, you have recently announced e Healthcare Aid Pilot Program, ESL Healthcare Aid Pilot Program. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to. And, uh, you know, I, let me just say first and foremost, you know, how much I agree with you. Uh, certainly the you know, education is so important, uh, not just for our society as a whole, but for individuals, and it really gives uh, people who pursue higher education opportunities greater, greater success. Uh, so to, to the point that you've raised, uh, as you mentioned, we have announced uh, and uh, recently released a new program. It's an ESL uh, healthcare aid pilot program. So what we're doing with this program as a healthcare aid, individuals that are taking the program are learning the, the skills and knowledge that's required to become a healthcare aid but at the same time, uh, they are also able to uh, strengthen their English language skills. And so that we've designed a very unique pilot so that individuals who are ESL, who have English as a second language, don't have to face the language barrier. And they're able to strengthen their English at the same time that they're doing their healthcare aid program. Usually, you have to do other programs to strengthen your English and then apply to, uh, to a post-secondary program. In this new and exciting pilot, we're trying to do both things at the same time. So this program, why do you think Alberta need that at this time, in a pandemic time? Well, I think there's you know, many obvious reasons. Of course, in the pandemic, uh, we need all hands on deck. To, uh, to help uh, combat COVID-19 and to keep um, everyone safe. Uh, and so there's, there's certainly uh, an immediate demand, uh, but of course for the future, uh, when we're past with COVID-19, we need to make sure we do everything that we can to have a strong healthcare system. It's one of the things that makes our province uh, so, so strong and so unique. So um, taking these steps will make sure we're able to deal with some of the immediate challenges with COVID, but as well that we can have a stronger healthcare system for all of us to enjoy in the future. So basically, if I understood correctly, it will be combined with the ESL program. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So um, students participating in the program will be learning the skills and knowledge required to become a healthcare aide but at the same time, they're also participating in, uh, in ESL uh, and English language uh, strengthening uh, at, at the same time with the program. So what qualification they need, um, like if they want any student um, who is learning English and want to apply or want to be a candidate for this program, what qualifications they needed? Well, the best thing to do is uh, to, to uh, look at the post-secondary institutions that will be offering this program uh, and, and, and look at their admission uh, requirements to make sure that they meet all the requirements because it may vary from one institution to the next. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we are working with four colleges to offer this program. So it's, it won't be available at all 
universities or colleges, but at four specifically. Uh, the, there's two in Calgary, which is Bow Valley College and Columbia College, um, in Edmonton, Norquest College, and as well, Red Deer College will also be participating in this program. So if any, anyone is interested, they should look specifically at those institutions and, and look at the admission requirements. So if the student is already taking the ESL program or they're already enrolled, but they want to if they are in Edmonton, Calgary, or Red Deer, as you mentioned, and they want to switch over, is any process or, um, or they just have to contact the college or the ministry? Uh, yes, uh, there, uh, and I think that that would be a great opportunity. You know, if there are individuals who are already taking ESL and uh, want to match that with the healthcare aid program, if they have interest in becoming a healthcare aid, the best thing for them to do, because they might be at an institution that isn't one of the four that I just mentioned. Uh, so the best thing that they can do is contact the institution directly, because of course each college and university uh, manages and, and creates their own admission requirements. So the best thing to do for anyone who is interested to find out more uh, is to contact uh, the, those four colleges. Colleges I mentioned, uh, and they'll be very happy to help you know, individuals find a path forward. No, I really appreciate, you know, basically it's like, you know, in the schools we have a trade classes. They are not just learning the English, but they're also developing the skills so they can be part of the workforce and they will be able to support the health system, which we really needed and, you know, it's really required. Um, so if I understand, so ESL has its own length of the program and for medical aid is a different, different length, right? So will it be funded by the Alberta government or federal government or how does this going to work or the tuition fee? Yes, so uh, there will be tuition fees of, of course associated um, with the program, but we are providing um, over $3 million in funding from the provincial government um, to help get the program up and running. Uh, you know, it is important when we are looking at uh, specific initiatives such as this one, new and innovative programs. Uh, sometimes uh, it requires some investment from the provincial government. Um, and, you know, even though we are in a uh, challenging financial time, it is important that we do make very strategic uh, investments in areas that are going to help Albertans find uh, new, new career opportunities. Uh, we're hoping it'll be a, a success. It is, uh, I think we should note, it is a pilot program. So, so we are testing it and, and we will be um, starting the pilot uh, in, uh, in March of uh, 2021. And, and we're hoping that uh, through the four colleges, we'll be able to see uh, over 100 uh, to 150 students participate uh, in the program. And uh, if we see that it's a success, then uh, we can look at continuing to provide the program in the future. The students does, like if they are applying, you know, the ESL, they are learning the English and when they are applying for funding or completing the application form, English would be a struggle, right? So do you have any support in that area also? Like it's all those four colleges, have any counselors who will be helping them to fill the, uh, fill the gaps or complete the applications? Yes, absolutely. Uh, at any of those four colleges I mentioned, um, when, uh, if, if someone is, is interested and they want to contact the admissions office, uh, or uh, the administrators of that of this program, particularly, I'm sure they would be uh, more than happy to help uh, provide uh, assistance in uh, completing the applications and learning more about the program. Well, ESL program is open for all the immigrants, right? And th they can learn without the age, gender, um, like you could be 17 or you could be 50 years old, right? And then you can take the ESL classes. But with this specific program, do you have any uh, pre-qualification like they should have this many, that much of education or this grades they need to be completed? Like, you know, say science 30 or, you know, science 20 or science 10, or that kind of a pre-qualification or qualifications required for this courses? Yeah, and, and that's, um, that's exactly why 
uh, we're, we're very excited about these program, uh, about this program because many of our post-secondary institutions have told us that the English language requirements for the healthcare aid program in particular were, uh, were causing some people and preventing some people from being able to apply. Usually they, they had the other admission uh, requirements. And again, uh, that varies according to institution. But what they did see happening across uh, those, those colleges and other institutions was that the English language requirements were getting in the way. And, and that was stopping some people from being successful in their application. So, you know, it, we started to think very differently and, and our incredible post-secondary institutions started to think about uh, a new and innovative way of doing it. And they, we thought, well, isn't there a way in which we can uh, provide that ESL training in the program? Uh, and, and of course, that's where we've landed. So we're very hopeful that by making this change, more people that uh, had previously qualified would be, will be able to do so now. And uh, we hope to see more people um, being accepted into the program, which of course is beneficial for them, gives them a, a, a terrific career opportunity uh, and helps strengthen our province and our healthcare system. So sir, like um, Alberta government has 2030 vision. Like, you know, they want to see Alberta in its proper place or is it, like, you know, which they want to achieve. So how it aligns with that, their 2030, 2030 vision? Well, uh, the, the 2030 vision is um, our 10-year strategic plan for the post-secondary system. Uh, we haven't finalized the plan yet, but uh, we will be doing so over the next few weeks. So I encourage um, people watching your, your broadcast and, and listening to, uh, to, to continue to keep an eye out for more information. One of the important things though that will be in the strategy is the importance of expanding access and uh, strengthening the student experience, as well as building um, skills for jobs. So an initiative like this achieves both objectives uh, by helping to address the Eng English language requirements we're, uh, we're expanding access and creating more opportunities for Albertans to uh, to pursue post-secondary education. And as well, we're also helping individuals uh, learn skills that will uh, allow them to, to be successful uh, with the healthcare aid pilot, of course, a very strong and popular program. And individuals that graduate will, will have um, uh, successful options in front of them. So when, like, I came from India to 20 years ago, and then to to identify or to establish what education I have completed, I have to do the IQAS International Qualification Assessments. You know, um, so for the students who are going to apply for this program or want to be part of this program, do they have to provide this information too, or uh, you are going to do a test, which basically to justify they are ready to go for this program? Well, again, the, uh, the admission uh, requirements depend on, on the specific institutions. Um, but um, with, with this program, of course, there does need to be um, English language proficiency. Um, and uh, again, that may be flexible uh, depending on the institutions, but if individuals are able to demonstrate um, proficiency in English uh, uh, from abroad, uh, in, as, as they're coming to Canada, I, I'm sure the institutions are looking at um, um, English language proficiency assessments. I know there are a number of, of global standards that can be looked at. So I know like uh, another question is like if it's, it's, they're all new immigrants who are taking the ESL program. So are you going to provide the childcare benefits also or when they are attending the school? Because the length uh, well, is going to increase, right? Like ESL has only say six months or one year program. This will be about three years. So that's what my question is. Well, uh, it, I, that's not something that, that we've looked at uh, with, with this program. Uh, but I think the, uh, the important 
uh, element here, of course, is that we're, we're providing those, those new opportunities to, to create a faster pathway. And uh, rather than, of course, um, taking ESL, strengthening English, and then applying for a program, which obviously will, will take more time, um, doing both of them at the same time uh, will, will be faster and help learners uh, find, find career opportunities so that they can provide for their families, which I know is always the most important um, issue that, that we're all considering. Thank you. Um, so my last question to you, sir, or my request, what message would you like to give to the viewers? The message that, that I would give is that um, this is um, an example of uh, a new and exciting and innovative program that is going to help individuals who, um, who uh, need to strengthen their, their English language. Uh, it'll not only help them strengthen their English language, but put them on a clear path to becoming a healthcare aide. So um, essentially they'll, they'll be able to, uh, to achieve two goals with, with one program. And so if getting in, involved in our healthcare system is something that is of interest to you, um, uh, this new program will, uh, will, will, will help you move through that process. And again, I know that uh, in the past, many learners uh, were turned away and were not accepted because there were uh, English language barriers. And so I'm very confident that this new program is going to eliminate those barriers and help more people find success. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for uh, advanced education for providing us this fantastic information. Um, so, could you please tell us four colleges' name one last, like one more time, please? Yeah, of course, I'd be happy to. So, again, uh, that's uh, that. Uh, the pilot program is is running for two years. We're going to run the pilot program for two years. So that's starting this March. And uh, the four colleges, there are two in Calgary, that's Bull Valley College and Columbia College, one in Edmonton, which is Norquest College, and in uh, and Red Deer College, of course, in, in Red Deer and in Central Alberta. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. And thank you for taking a busy time from your schedule and coming to our show and providing the information. Um, so you are watching Honeywalia show where Minister of Advanced Education has provided us more information on ESL Healthcare Aid Pilot Program. The government has initiated and provided about $3 million to give the new immigrants a new opportunity to work in a health aid program. If you have any more questions, you are more than welcome to contact the ministry or the four colleges or us. Um, and we will provide you the more information. Please keep watching the Honeywalia show. We not only have this program in English, we have in other languages also. I'm your host, Sonal Kool. Take your leave till we meet again.